Alan Miller, and here on Sam IT on YouTube, we're going to talk about the latest NIST announcement that just came out yesterday, I believe, uh, as to guidelines around password complexity and how passwords should be uh, dealt with for security. And I think this is really interesting because this is stuff I've been talking about for years. I'm very happy that uh, NIST has agreed to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, something like that. It replaces the older and the American National Standards Institute, but it's the United States government's uh, research and standards arm that does all kinds of important think tank kind of stuff. They're the ones who also uh, provide the formal U.S. definition of cloud computing, for example. Anyway, they finally have published, after many years, a guideline as to how to handle passwords based on the realities of humans and computers. Really quickly, that guideline is something around, something like this. Your password should be long, pass phrases, 25 characters or longer, and they should not change often. Now, why? Why is this important? First of all, there's, so there's two things we have challenges with. One is making passwords difficult for computers to guess. The other is making them easy for humans to remember. And these two things actually work pretty well together. Humans are great at remembering long strings of things that don't have any obvious connections to computers. Computers are really good at going through lots of iterations of small things very quickly. This means that by having a long passphrase, 25 characters or longer, means it takes a computer a really long time to try to brute force through it. Lifetimes, right? Millennia, uh, at least with current computer standards. So an attempt to brute force uh, a long passphrase is very difficult for computers, but remembering it is fairly easy for humans. So having a passphrase like this means that your average computer user can sit down, type in a password, get it right almost every time, not have to write it down on a sticky note, not have to resort to something really simple like just having the entire alphabet in order, and they can log in and it's not a big problem for them. For the computer, it's effectively impossible to brute force through it and break that password. So this is a great approach. This flies in the face of what people have traditionally tried to do, which is, one, often limit the lengths of passwords. I have no idea why people did this, but lots of databases were set up to only allow like eight characters or 12 characters, which is not very long in the grand scheme of things, and people who had long passwords were often truncated. That doesn't work. And we often tried to force um, human complexity onto passwords instead of computational complexity. Things like putting in punctuations and capital letters and numbers and things like that. Things that are very difficult difficult for humans to remember and to get correct, and yet the computer can't even tell you tried to make it more complex. That complexity exists only to humans, not to computers. So what point was there? And then the other thing is that we constantly made humans change their passwords. Now this one's a little bit more difficult to explain because obviously the more often you change a password, the less impact there is of someone trying to break into it right? If they did break into it, it'll change on them. They will no longer have access. If they are attempting a brute force attack, it's a little bit more difficult if that password is constantly changing. Although it's not exactly as hard as it seems. If you're changing your password, say, every day and someone's trying a brute force against you every day, just because you changed it does not dramatically decrease the chances that you're going to have a collision and that they might get in. They, that might still happen. In fact, changing your password might be the thing that caused them to find it. So mathematically, it is not as advantageous as it sounds. It is better than not changing it, but it is not as advantageous as it sounds because there is a bunch of math that goes on st with statistics. That means that in a situation like that where you're trying to brute force a password, while you may have moved the mark to something that the computer has already tested, you may also move the mark to something it's about to test. Uh, but more importantly, humans cannot handle rapidly changing passwords. Rapidly could mean once a week, it could mean once every 90 days, it might even mean once a year. To an adult, once a year changing a password is a frustrating event. They took them all year to get it right, now they have to change it again, and when you start changing it, the one that they had last year sticks in their brains for a while and they can't remember which one's which. Compound this over a number of years or months or weeks or whatever your change rate is, and it just gets worse over time. The reality of this is that humans are either forced into a situation of having to track their passwords somewhere, which is very common, hence the sticky notes on the monitors, sticky notes under the keyboards, notes in their wallets, whatever, 
or resorting to completely insecure, ridiculous processes like adding the number one after a password and then adding a number two after it when that one expires and so forth. This is what humans do. They have to. It's how the human brain works. We can't remember long, complex passphrases all the time. We're not capable of it. So when we make those kinds of requirements, we are actually making the decision that humans must work around the security and do something very insecure. Sure, some human somewhere spends all their time memorizing passwords and can do some pretty complex things. But in the real world with real users, when we make the decision to make them change their passwords often, we are making the decision at that point that we will force them to work around the intended security system and do something inherently insecure. So NIST has taken this into account in addressing what makes things complex for computers and what makes things easy for humans, combines them into long passphrases that are easy to use, that don't worry about but don't block arbitrary complexity like characters and numbers and letters and caps and punctuation and whatnot and does not change often or ever always change in the event of um, a breach, of course. Uh, but short of that, possibly never changing them. And this is the same logic that applies to keys in like the SSH world, right? We don't generally uh, create a new key every week or month or year. They normally last for quite a long time and humans aren't even remembering those. So we could, in theory, change them more often. But because they're incredibly long, often 2,000 or 4,000 characters or longer, plus they are complex, uh, both to humans and to computers, um, we tend to keep them for a very long time because they're so incredibly hard to break. If they're just effectively impossible to break because they're random and super long. So putting these things together, I'm very happy that NIST has done this. They consistently do a pretty good job with these kinds of things. And it mirrors what uh, people I know in security have been saying for decades. But it has been very hard to convince organizations to take sensible security steps because there's been so much marketing around these rapid, weird password changes that cause all kinds of problems. Common sense says what we've been doing doesn't work. Reality says it hasn't worked but people have not been catching on, so NIST has stepped in and done something very sensible and very useful for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the market. So thank you for watching. I hope this was informational, and if you have uh, any questions or comments, uh, obviously you can put them uh, on uh, the thread that is linked below, or you can talk right on YouTube. Uh, remember to like and subscribe.